Hello, I am James Woodcock from jameswoodcock.co.uk and today I'm in Sheffield at the Magna Science Adventure Centre to see some upcoming titles from various developers and publishers. So without further ado, let's pop inside and see what it's all about. So there's modern consoles, there's older consoles, and Sarah, who's kindly videoing for me today, is just going to follow me around as we have a look at what's on offer. So we've got some modern consoles, of course, so if we have over here, we've got the Xbox 360, and it looks like this one's playing FIFA 11. And just keep following me, Sarah, keep following me, there we go. So we've got Xbox 360s over here. We have a PlayStation 2, we have a Sega Mega Drive, or if you're from the States, a Sega Genesis. We have a Amiga CD32 right here, and you don't see many of those. Uh, PlayStation 3s, but the really interesting stuff, as far as I'm concerned, is they've got a lot of retro consoles and games all on display, so people who have never even ever seen these things will have to go to play on some of these wonderful titles. So let's go down to the other side and see what there is. So as we head further down to the noisier section of this event, we're heading towards the more retro gaming consoles and computers, which you may have seen from your past as a youth, or maybe have never seen at all. And what's really nice to see, there's a lot of youngsters playing consoles and computers they've probably never even touched in their lives. And even better, they seem fascinated. Okay, so we have PlayStation 1s just here, we have a Nintendo NES, a first generation Sega Master System, and we will have a go on a few of these games in a bit. Sega Mega Drive, PlayStation 1, the very dinky PlayStation 1 over here. This place is actually quite busy. We've got a whole section here for Sumo Digital. I've done many titles for Sega in the past and we'll be looking at one of their newest titles that'll be coming soon. A sequel in fact. So over here we've got a few Nintendo consoles. We have a Nintendo 64, Nintendo GameCube in the striking purple there, more PlayStation 1s. And I think what's very impressive about this whole event, we've got so many different consoles and computers here. They've managed to source all these for this event. We've got arcade cabinets. The days of the arcade are sadly behind us. Now we have them in the home, but it's still an attractive thing to see. I think one of the first titles I played in the arcade was Outland, which, funnily enough, was by Sega. Well, here's a very famous one, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Quite a few people had these, and this is probably people's first foray into doing basic programs. And on the opposite side, on the opposite side, we have some more arcade cabinets where you can actually sit in within them and have a steering wheel. I think that it transformed the way we interact with a racing game, and as a result, arcades became very popular. I 
as we continue down this corridor of nostalgia, we have a Commodore VIC-20. And this is where we're getting more into the computer side. This is when a lot of people probably first had their own personal computer in their house rather than at work. And you'd have to be very lucky then as well. An Acorn Electron. This is nostalgia. And of course, when these computers age, they go a little bit tingy brown. Can't be helped, but there would have been a gorgeous white when they were new. Now, one of my very first home computers was the Commodore 64. Had one, had one of those wonderful cassette decks where you had to wait probably a half an hour at least to even get a chance to play your game as it loaded from the cassette. If it loaded at all, because they were notorious for you get about halfway and then there'd be an error and you'd have to start again. So if you worry about loading times today on the Xbox 360 or other consoles, imagine how it was then. And of course, this era, when we're talking about Commodore and Amstrad, it was all about chip tunes, basic 8-bit music. And actually, it's still very much popular today, where people create new music, but it still has that 8-bit feel and sound. And here's a bit of wordplay for you. Somebody's got a software title here of Jack the Nipper. I'm sure people from the UK will know exactly what that is trying to refer to. Well, now I'm here with Sumo Digital. It's Steve Lysett who has the fancy job title of executive producer. How are you, Steve? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying being at Games Britannia. Yeah, so have you found it? Oh, busy. <laughs> so we, we did an up and down on Thursday. I did a couple of talks about the making of All Star Racing and the history of games in Sheffield. And then the kids can basically come in here and then play that history. You know, they've got consoles and computers from all ages. It's been great, seriously. And from an educational point of view, it's like education through stealth. Like kids go, I love making games, I want to make games. And you go, well, you'll need to do maths and English and science. Brilliant, absolutely great idea. There are definitely a lot of parents here, especially dads showing the youngsters <laughs> their misspent youth playing all these classic games. And it is, you know, it's brilliant, because they go, look out, I used to play this with a kid, it's, it's great, it's brilliant. Kids are like, that's rubbish, where's Call of Duty? You know? <laughs> But it's nice, it's been good. We've had all kinds of people come through. I mean, we've got all kinds of games on the stand at the minute. We've got some of our old stuff, like Outrun and All Stars Racing. Uh, and Doc which of course you can get for free. Uh, and we're showing a new game as well today. We're showing All Star Chance Rob. So we're getting a lot of interest in that. That's quite cool. Yeah, that's great. So before we get to the really good stuff, the latest stuff, let's just have a little trip around memory so lane in the, the Sega yeah, it's section. It's quite cool, isn't it? So, I mean, today we've got, let's have a look. So Outrun, obviously, uh, Outrun 2006, we did that all. I can't even remember how long ago. Uh, but obviously we did that on multiple platforms. And that was a result of doing that one too, just on Xbox. So we did this one, Sega wants to expand it out. They said, okay, can we get it on PS2? Bearing in mind, they told us it would be impossible to port it to Xbox. Can you put it on PS2? A totally different set of hardware. Well, okay, we'll try, we'll try. And we pulled it off, so that was good. And then PC and obviously PSP as well. So if PS2 was impossible, what's PSP like? But we did it. Sort of, it almost killed us, but it's nice to see it together. And do you know what? It's great. This is the first time all day I've seen people just playing and running around with it, so brilliant. And as a developer, of course, you're covering multiple platforms. Um, how do you find that? Because it is a big demand for handheld console, and we're talking in the world of apps now, of app stores. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, over the years, we've, we've wound up doing more and more platforms. So if you look at Iron 2, that was Xbox. Then 2006 was Xbox, PS2, PSP, and PC. And then obviously uh, PT3 we did Xbox alone, but then we had to the PSP again. And then we got to All-Stars All Tennis and we, we basically had five platforms. Racing went to six because we have Wii, 360, PS3, PC, DS. And on Transform now, oh, on, on iOS as well. So we did that one after us. And Arcade! So that was seven, blind man, went out of fingers. Um, right. <laughs> and then Transforms the on everything, pretty much everything. And it's so difficult to make a game which scales across all that stuff. And that's why, for the new game, we built a new engine. It's just to make life easier for ourselves. So the, the short answer is, lots of time, lots of pressure, lots of money, and lots of, lots of sleep. Lots of lots of sleep. Lots. So you'd really make recommend people join the industry then? Yeah, yeah, come and join me. It's a good fun. Yeah, if we had more people, I could lose less sleep, you know. <laughs> well, there you go, then. Because You're doing it for Steve's benefit. Please, please come and work with us. It's great. You get lots of pizza. You get to work late hours and... Uh, 
Yeah, it's great. Honest. You were selling, really selling this. I'm not yeah. selling it. I'm not selling it. But no, but seriously, it's a lot of fun to make these games, and it's even more fun when you come to an event like this and you see people playing them. I mean, yesterday I was at Summer of Sonic, and man, that's so brilliant. Everybody all day, so nice. And we said, did you enjoy the game? Yeah, it's great. Oh, we love it. Can we get so-and-so in? Can we get this? And that's what makes it worthwhile, because at the end of the day, we, we, we're, not, you know, like, we're not providing something which is going to change the world in any way, kind of shape or form, but we are giving people entertainment to the enjoyment. And when we see people enjoying it, it makes what we do kind of worthwhile and it makes us happy. So it makes us then want to do stuff which is better. And every game we do, we try and make it better. And that's what's, what's in it for us, really, I guess. Well, I've reviewed quite a few Simo Digital titles over the years yeah, and yeah, they've yeah. come out positively, very yeah, positively. Yeah, no, 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 that's why I'm talking to you. That's why I'm not doing this. Yeah, you have to, you see, you have to <laughs> grease people up to even get an interview these days. But no, but seriously, really good games from Simo Digital and I'm glad you're involved with Sega for that very reason. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. I mean, We've, we've had a long connection with Sega and it's lovely to work on their stuff because we get to play the games and work on the characters and IPs of the things we used to love as kids and play. So, you know, when I'm sat there in the Sonic team's office, like saying, yeah, we would like to do this and that. And they go, okay, that's fine. And it's like, wow, I get to like play with all my heroes. It's great. <laughs> exactly. I mean, who'd have thought we'd see a day where we'd see Sonic and Mario in the same game, for example? Oh, that's, that's mind blowing, isn't it, when you think about it? You know, the, the debate of schoolyards, like, well, 20 years ago, it's like, yeah, Mario's better than Sonic. No, no, Sonic's better than Mario. Sonic can run. Mario's a plumber, you know. Obviously, I can't say which side I was on then, because it might cause some ructions, but... Yeah, we'll probably move on <laughs> from that. It's good the friends now. It's good the friends now. Yeah, Sonic and the plumber getting a lot of great stuff. So we've got Outrun. We've got Outrun. I mean, we've yeah, got Doctor Who. So, I mean, so that's is, completely different, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I mean, the thing is, Sumos tend to be known for the kind of Sega stuff, but we've done a lot of other stuff as well. I mean, the Doctor Who game's available from the BBC completely free of charge. Anyone who's a licensed player in the UK can basically download it. And it's a great game for like kids or people who are not really into complicated, fast action games. It's a nice thing, it's educational a bit, but you know, a totally free game by the BBC with a British developer as well. So we were so proud to be involved with that. Uh, and it's, it's just a dream come true. Again, as kids, you watch Doctor Who, you grow up, you end up working on Doctor Who. What could be better? So why is it free? I mean, where, where's the marketing thinking from that? Well, really, I mean, the, the idea was to kind of tie in with the TV series. So when the TV series finished, then you could continue the story uh, and see where things were going by playing the games. And indeed, we released, I think, the first three episodes at the end of the first series with uh, Matt Smith. At the end of the second series, the fourth one, actually kind of carries on from where the series leaves off. So it was an idea of BBC said, OK, there's new emerging media. Let's, let's see if we can do something interesting. Uh, and because of the way BBC runs, they didn't want to charge for it. I mean, BBC Worldwide can actually create commercial products because uh, they're like console games or something in America and stuff like that. But because this was a UK thing by BBC UK, uh, actually with Wales, I think, uh, that means they can basically give it away for free. I'm sure they're selling it to someone else in the world, but in the UK, absolutely free. So please download it, give it a try. So there you go. If you have the BBC, <laughs> you're in luck in the UK. So we continue on. I mean, do you want to demo any of these? I mean, Doctor Who. I'm going to eat oh, Doctor don't Who. Play Doctor Who. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's a great game, but it's all puzzles and thinking, and you know, it's in terms of fast live action, not so much. <laughs> okay, so let's find one for Steve. He's really. So into. it's funny actually. We're just walking past uh, one to Monty Mall. So I mean, this is a little bit of like the Sheffield issue we've got kind of going off here. I mean, the guy who wrote Monty Mall is now working at Sumo. Uh, the guy who did Potty Pigeon. You know, we've got Tony Craver and Pete Harrop and. All those people which worked in Sheffield and they've been part of the Sheffield Gaming Team now are part of Sumo. So it's great that we've got all these people we've worked with for years and we can bring them back. So, yeah, a little bit of scene. We've got a Sumo logo on it. <laughs> I'm sure we're involved in it somehow. Now, give me that, Mike. Back on the interview. Yes, right? yeah, you're the interview. Getting right? carried away. So we'll have a walk down. Yes, yeah, so, so we'll continue around this uh, Sumo Digital stand. <laughs> so I apologise. I've created a slight bit of a crowd here. Uh, what we've got, we've got the new game, All Star Transform, and we've just announced on the stage we're going to do a contest of boys versus girls on the 16th, see if we can find the fastest lap. Hopefully some prizes, I've been promised these prizes, otherwise I've sold them some fibs. But we'll, we'll move past that one while, they're, while their game is there. Well, of course, that's a sequel to the oh, original game. Racing. So I will walk across. So we'll hope some of these guys have got it, though, no. So the, the first thing is obviously these guys are playing the PC version. Don't worry, you're on camera. Don't don't get nervous. Don't crash. All right. So All Stars Racing was yeah All Stars Racing was uh, basically we did Sega Superstars Tennis, uh, which was all kind of Sonic characters playing tennis together. And we thought right, we'll do something afterwards. And we talked to Sega. What what do you want? They went 
well, you didn't outrun. Why don't we do an outrun style racing game with all the Sega characters and get things from every IP? So again, we got to work with all the characters we loved and things we wanted to get into games for a long, long time. So you've got like Ryo Hazuki from uh, Shenmue. You know, you've got kind of characters like uh, Akira and uh, Jackie from uh, Virtua Fighter racing around in a, an almost AM2 Ferrari style car, maybe referencing out one a little bit, uh, but all in these crazy worlds. And it, it's great because it allows us to do really, really crazy things. You know, you can have tracks which are just not realistic in any way, shape or form. Corkscrew, zero gravity, flying in space, you know, rushing around and just looking at crazy. I mean, this, this track we're on here, it's like you're inside a gigantic uh, slot machine. Which is then in the room. I mean, you're upside down, you're on top, you're it's, oh, it's mental. And we really went to town with it, but when we finished it, we had so many ideas left over, we thought, well, where can we go with it? What can we do next? And so we said, okay, well, let's look at doing another one. But let's do something different with it. Let's, instead of just racing in cars, we'll do land, air, and sea, so you can be in a car, a boat, or a plane, but all in the space of one track, so things will change as you go. And that's really how the new games come around. Right, I mean, I love this original game. Yeah, man, I... And I don't know if I didn't mention Mario Kart, but I think this may have an edge <laughs> on it. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. We get compared. I mean, obviously, both games have got a wide selection of characters. You know, both games are driving. I like to think we're a bit different. We're more of a racing game than a karting game. I know the difference probably seems negligible, but we're about fast shifts around corners, constant game speed boost, and there's some weapons involved. And I think we've seen a new game. We've even taken it a little bit more further. Mario is like go karting around a circuit. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, and I better move on before I get in trouble and uh, harm from Nintendo fans. So this is the sequel. How's this so differ this other sequel. than the transformation? So, so what we're doing here, I mean, what we've tried to do is we've gone, okay, let's look at tracks where we can actually get land out and scene. So it's mean we can do IPs for the first time, like Panzer Dragoon. Uh, and what you'll see in this track is basically people will race on the land. An event will happen. In this case, uh, an airship gets shot down, blocks the track, breaks up in your route, you go around the corner and you go to take to the waves, so the car will just transform seamlessly into boat and onto water. You go around the water to follow that, you come back out, another event happens, which is a dragon basically is being attacked by a gigantic tentacle worm, smashes the bridge, and then you take off and you fly for all that. So in this twice of a race, you're like land, air and sea, all just like that. And it's been a real challenge to get together, I mean, mostly because when people play it, they probably think it's seamless, it all makes perfect sense, but land requires tight, twisting tracks with lots of chicanes, uh, lots of drifting, you know, you're swinging through switch bikes. You try it on water, it's not much fun, because water needs to be wide. As soon as you start doing this in a boat, it's very unnatural, so wide areas. Uh, it's very dynamic, we've got waves, we can drop things in the water, it splashes, you can kick up spray, you can push people with your weight, that kind of thing. And the speed's a little bit quick on water as well. So that needs a whole new section of level building. And then the air, again, you need area to fly in, you need things to fly under, above, pass, through, against boost things so that's a separate again so when you build a track you've got all these three different things uh, and you've got to make them work together and that's been a challenge <laughs> yeah i mean just a moment ago we were talking about challenging development can be for different consoles and handhelds and here you are adding three types of gameplay in a single game yeah, yeah, I mean, and to nail just one of those can be difficult enough so why why even go over there three yeah i'm not sure why we decided to do it <laughs> i think with this we, we always want to try and top what we've done before and these all-star games, the superstar games, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's now more characters and IPs than ever. We've got 16 brand new tracks, all with different themes from different games. Uh, we've got something in the demo showing Panzer Dragoon, that's like a, like a Grand Canyon-esque environment. Then we've got Super Monkey Ball, which is a constant downhill race from the top to the bottom. We teleport you back to the top, so it's like running down a river up. It's like a log flume, if you will. And then we've got Gold Knights, where you race around an active volcano. You actually race boats in lava, which we, we, we kind of went like, is that okay to do it? We're like, it's like cartoon characters in cars, we can get away with it, we'll put that in. And then you're flying through a volcano, and then you've got Fleming and racing, there's skeletons and things falling down it. So we can go to town with it. And that's what we've tried to do. 60 new tracks, all with new themes and all the rest of it. And just make it bigger and better. Let's do Dragon Canyon, because I think it shows land, air and sea. Uh, and I'll just basically talk you through it. Uh, we've actually got a few different difficulties. I'm going to choose A-Class because the speed's increased over that. Just means I can do it a bit quicker. <laughs> uh, you see we've got lots of cases in there, we've got kind of Sonic in there in his car, we've got II, we've got Amigo. Uh, we'd like to try and get a range of cases which like will satisfy non-fans just as much as fans. We find cool stuff what people like to play. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat and just go back to Sonic. So these screens are just placed all the time in. This is the E3 demo good. Uh, actually the, the full game looks very, very different. <laughs> That's all I can say.
So you can see we've got eight players all getting ready to race. Uh, we're just going to load this up. Uh, again, loading time is not final this day, so don't worry about that. Gives me time to have a think about what I'm going to say. Of course. So what you'll see now is you'll see basically this is uh, the results of the new engine. We've got kind of really nice lighting. We've got soft shadows. Uh, we've got animated creatures. We can do very, very big things. We actually build all this scenery kind of out of instances, so it's very, very flexible. It's very memory kind of sensible as well, so we can make huge, huge vistas and lots of detail. Uh, you can see that obviously we've got very dynamic water. When we race on that, you'll see that a little bit more. Uh, I'll just quit fancy this to a camera. So we start traditionally very all stars racing. Uh, see the cars are all lined up in the grid. We've got all different characters. You can see them all ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to take off now and just drive. So, oh, I've got a boost off. I thought we took that. Well, that was good. Of course, now we won't get to see all the battling, so I'll probably just pull back and let the guys get past me. So, as with the first game, you can collect weapons. Uh, the weapons you see in again are prototype ones. We're actually, again, quite different in the full game now. Very SSR. We can get around the corners. We just basically use that to drift. The more I drift, you can see tails come out of the car. I'll actually get boost. I'm going to crash now because I was pointing at the screen. Uh, <laughs> and the longer the drift, the more boost you get. So it's actually quite important. Oh, God. It's actually quite important to try and drift as much as you can. And then take the advantage of the boost you get from it. So I'm going to sneak past these guys here. Yeah? It's one of the new weapons, that's a remote control car. You'll notice it looks like Sonic because it was Sonic who fired it. Oh, it tells a shot at the swipe. And again, he's trading like shots from me, so I'll just take him out. You know, I can do a little bit of drifting on the shakes, but it's not like the old game where you could snake. Uh, I've got a split route here, so I'll take the top route, it's a little bit quicker. But so when I come out of it, what it's going to let me do is I can actually do a stunt off that. Oh, I didn't land it. If you're on the stun right, you get a boost as well. So it's all about chaining the drifts and doing the stunts and trying to get the speed up. Right, you see that warning bomb screen, I'm going to get shot. Yeah, I'm not doing a really good job of demoing this, am I? Well, it looks very nice, Steve. <laughs> it looks good. The engine looks good. Right, okay, so I'm going to focus on this a little bit. So now on this... Good grief, I'm getting hammered. So, let's pick some weapons up and try and get back into the race. We'll get that shot off. Um, so on this lap now, well, the first lap we noticed was all land based, we've just been driving around. We're actually going to go around this track now. When I come around this corner, you'll see an airship has actually crashed some blocks off the land route. So now we've got to think about taking a different route, and we're going to go through this gate here. This is a transform gate, and every time you go through one, you'll seamlessly transform to a different form. So you can see, we're on water now. The game hasn't stopped, paused, and we had to have to load, we're straight into it. I'm still getting shot, but now I'm reacting to the dynamic surface, you'll see this is going to break, so make a big splash. Again, I can do a stunt off that now. There's a shortcut if I can get to it, which will give me a super weapon, which I missed. Again, we've got waterfalls. This is going to like a... Whoa! The actual flow of the water is actually a bit faster. That will actually pull you towards the edge. And again, if I can get around this corner, uh, the shelf crew fires. There's a big splash that will again jump you in the air. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that was bad. Don't stop to cough, right? Good tip for any game. Don't stop to go off. That's, that's why I can bounce off the sides. It's quite forgiving. All right, so I shot up. Went around the outside, shot him again. So right, I'm up in second. I'm not being so embarrassed anymore. So obviously we've done land and sea now. Uh, what we're going to see on this lap is uh, you're going to see a bit of air. So this course actually seems very lengthy. Uh, the track's a little bit longer than last time. Uh, this is the longer one because we kind of have so many GPs, and the last track of each one is like a big finale track for that GP, and this is one of the finale tracks. So you can see I'm chasing that blue dragon now. Obviously I can drift. Oh. And the air drifting's the same as land drifting. You can use that to get speed and boost, and not to crash into the scene, which I'm just showing off. You see I've got lots of things to fly around. We've got lots of flying area. If I get close to stuff as well, I can kind of battle roll out the way if needs be. Get through the boost wings, I'm going to come around this section. Now, fly quite low, you go a little bit fast as well. You can see the spray coming up. Again, chase opportunity here. That can take the top route, which is safer. The bottom route's faster, but more difficult. Right, so I've got one in front of me. Can I win the race? That's a question. If I can get a bit of boost. That's it. Took him on the finish line, that's it. So as long as I don't get shot to bits now, I should be all right. Ah, cool, I've got a catcher's mate. So actually, this one's quite cool. If somebody shoots me with this weapon, what I actually get is the weapon I was shot with. So it's like a shield and also you get a weapon for free. I'm first place, I'll take that. Right, so I'll do Golden Knights because this is another good example of a trike. Uh, we'll do this one. Uh, so obviously I'm a big Golden Knights fan. This is uh, one of the games we've always wanted to try and get in here. Uh, I think it's the only way from playing Golden Knights. I should do Gilius. <coughs> you can see Gilius is running this kind of Ray Haddyhausen style creature. 
And I should mention in the previous podcast, you sort of mentioned a desire to voice Gilius Thunderhead. <laughs> So, is that going to happen in this game? <laughs> well, I did place all the voices for some of the announcement stuff for this one. Uh, sadly not, we actually hire professionals for that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, I will do place all the voices for things as need be. So, if anyone we've laid on, I still recognise the character like skeleton straight away. And this is what I mean, when we talk about surfaces, it's not always about water. Uh, this track, you actually race on lava, which is mental, really, when you think about it. But you should get a good idea. And obviously the lava will form a natural grid there, so you know where the start finishes. That, that happens in real life too, apparently. So, 3-2-1. I'm not going to get a boost out this time, because I didn't time it right. So we start on lava. You can see we're chucking all kinds of flames up. I can do a stunt, fall in lava. Oh, I splash it on the screen. And then we transform. You see Gears transforms magically. It's like a lightning strike. Uh, there's actually the really kind of cheesy quack noise when he does that. That kind of classic movie hawk sound. All right, I'll try not to crash into stuff. And you can see this is much more difficult to try. This is actually from later in the game. Uh, so there's a lot more things to avoid, there's things to fly around, there's lots of cave stuff. Again, if I was a lot better and I wasn't trying to talk at the same time, I could have drifted there. But I'm going to try some drifting now. Oh, I've been shot again. Right, I'm having some of that. See again, that car looks like Gilius rather than it looks like Sonic. Each character shoots his own remote control cars. That's like an attention to detail thing, you know. We could have just made one remote control car, but we've done it for every single character. So what's about, more? sorry Stephen, what about the music in the game? Okay, yeah, so I should mention, so we've got brand new music in this game by Richard Jakes. Uh, he's a composer which has worked with us in many games previously. But it's actually dynamic. Now sadly you can't hear because of all the noise in this room. The music changes dynamically depending on what's going off. So if you change into a boat on some tracks it will actually change the music to kind of boat music. But as the action changes, whoa! God, I'm terrible at this. I shouldn't really play it, should I? Well, what about the historical tracks? Will they still feature any where in the game? Yeah, I mean, we've actually we've got uh, some tracks coming back from SSR because they were people's favourites. We actually got people to have a vote on that. We picked the four best tracks that people like the most. Uh, so we've got 16 brand new tracks and four classic tracks just for people to play. And we think that's a nice mix because if you like the classic tracks of the previous game, you get to race. But obviously, there's going to have to be some changes because the game's changed a little bit from handling model wise, as I'm demonstrating badly. <laughs> So let's try and get through a pipe. So that's a good chance you can play some of the tracks you really like before and play some new tracks and see lots of new IPs. And we've tried to make it so we've, we've kind of got one IP per new track. So we got criticised last time we've got three Sonic tracks and we have three Jet Set tracks and three Billy Archer tracks. And this time we've got 16 totally different tracks from totally different games. Um, so variety's been key. As we've said, you know, we're trying to get extra distance because this is a, a really important game for us. New technology, new engine, online multiplayer, all that kind of stuff. And online multiplayer, are we allowed to say how many players at once? Uh, no, but it's probably not eight. Ah, there's a good hint. I'm sure that means more, more of, not more less. Eight. Yeah, not less. Yeah, that, that'd be a bit rough, isn't it? Yeah, not eight. Uh, we'll probably to two players online, that'd be great. How do you feel about that? Oh, so you see uh, the garbage came over there. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at trying to increase the player count. There's someone we're just experimenting with now, so I can't really confirm it. Because if it changes, I'll just end up looking like an idiot. So it's going to be the same of the last generation title anyway? Oh, well, the last game had eight players online, so exactly. we'll have at least eight players online. Uh, and we're turning for a few more. I'll try not to cut through this anyway while I'm on camera. So this is an example. So right here, there's actually an alternative route you can sneak off onto. Whoops. And this one's a little bit of a quicker. You avoid those axes. Uh, but you run the risk here that you've got this steel pouring down. Obviously, a very Sheffield kind of theme there. Oh, I'm really not showing this game off in its best light. I'd, li I'd like to apologise for the audience. Uh, <laughs> that it's really difficult to play and talk at the same time. You're trying to think of what to say and control the game. Well, actually, what this you're is, doing very cleverly. You shouldn't, you shouldn't talk and drive on the mobile phone, and this is why. Yes, but half the time you only see the really good effect if you're crashing. <clears throat> That's not true. We keep all kinds of colour face when you're not crashing. Come on, Steve, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm doing it on purpose, so just to show how easy it is, even if you're crashing a lot to win. Exactly. Uh, that's it, a purposeful thing. So I'm going to sneak around the outside and tip around. So you notice the first two laps, we basically we did land and then water, and on this lap we're doing more air now. So what happens when you come out, we destroy parts of the trike, so you get to fly more of a trike. And we try and do that on all the trikes, so to change it in a way they might not expect, just to mix that race up. You see all that just fell down, blocks it off, I'm now going to go around the long way. So I'm going to try and drift around here. You see that volcano is like chucking massive chunks of rock out, which is why the track's going to pop. Oh, through the boost gate, look at that, drifting and boosting. 
So now I'm in first, I'm going to take advantage of it, go on the short way. Uh, all the tracks are basically, you've got different routes, I mean you can see I've taken alternate routes all the way through this. Uh, and it should really mix the race up. And we try not to separate races too much. Uh, side effects of that is, if you split the track too much, you end up splitting the race back. You've got three people racing against like a full pack of eight, I'll say for now. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, and what I'm going to do is drift too close to the edge because it resets you. Oh! It's like Muddy Walker came in there. Alright, let's just shoot that. So, I'm going to try and avoid Billy Joe. Well, he's got the glove anyway, so he's not going to tighten it. And again, I'm going to take advantage of this drop here to do a few stunts. If I do it a couple of times, I'll actually get a much bigger boost. Oh, chip ball, that's really chucked me back to the front. Which is good because I'm bouncing off the sides like, uh, like a rubber ring. So that's the golden axe track with Gillius, uh, expertly not played by me. So this one, this one's a different track, so we've got basically this one is land and water and we're actually starting to water on this track. See, nice bike off, lots of cameo characters, lots of animation, we've got confetti going off. Again, the advance in the engines allow us to do this. So it's monkey ball, so I'm going to be alright. So again, hopefully we'll get a nice chop off here. Track falls out, you can get a quick cheeky stunt in there for a boost. Here when I get down to this bit, I can either take the left route, which is more dangerous. There's no edges on this, so you can easily fall off. I'm going to try and avoid doing that this time. It's a little bit quicker as well, there's boost pads on it. The other route is safer, these light walls. Now as I come down here, there's some statues on this bit, and they're going to change every lap. So it starts off nice and easy, there's only like four of them. And again here I'm going to take the middle route. Uh, this track's all about choice really. We said, right, we'll try and get an alternate route in kind of every five or ten seconds. Uh, just split up. And you see cars taking the other route, are actually jumping over the top of me there. Well, I'm going to go this way. I'll explain what happens on that route in a sec. And again, oh, can I believe it? Filthy AI on this game. I'm going to have to get that tour to that. So again, I can take the side routes a little bit quicker where you've got boost. Obviously, it's a bit tricky up there. Or I can stay in the middle, which is nice and safe and easy. And again, through a transform game. Nice move, transform. Straight onto the water. There's actually monkey balls falling into the water at this point. I've got to watch out for those because they make big splashes. Uh, I managed to successfully avoid all of them, which was good. And also bad, because I can't demonstrate it. And then we've got a big pool of water here. This is actually under dynamic flow, so if you go around this way with the flow, it's actually fast, it will swing you around. And what we'll probably do is change the direction of flow. Down here, basically, I hit through a, like a teleport gate. It saves me top of the track, so it's basically one massive long downhill race. Uh, which is something, you know, you've probably not seen in the game before. Normally have a cannon fires you up. So just to prove it, I'll go around the safe route. Uh, although obviously sometimes you might decide I oh, I want to change routes so you can drop onto the, the dangerous route if you want to and this time the statues have changed formation so now I've got to watch which way I go try and avoid crashing into them again if you crash into me it doesn't penalise you too much we will slow down so I'm going to do the bomb route this time again this is more dangerous but there's a cool thing down here if I uh, come around this corner oh what oh that's terrible I like how he followed me off as well so I don't know if I can do it now, but basically if I stay centred on this, it's basically a monkey target. If I land on it, it'll generate a super weapon down here, which I obviously didn't get because it's not there. Uh, a perfect landing in the centre will give a super weapon which pops up. But you've got to be careful because just because it's there doesn't mean you'll get it, somebody might steal it. I've just fired off uh, the bees, which are the first place weapon. So the idea with this is that everybody in the, the, the other carting game, which may be available, uh, really doesn't like the blue shell weapon. So, we took a cue out of Blur's book, because Gareth Wilson was the design on that. And he basically said, the best thing to do is not to penalise a player in first place by just attacking them with nothing to do. Is instead to spawn something in front of them, which, even if they manage to avoid it, will still slow them down. It's a much fairer system, and it still allows skill. So you've still got to use some skill to get through it, but you're not just going to get shot or blown up. Really important for us, that. We want the weapon systems to be truly fair. That nothing really makes you upset or annoyed. Balanced. Yeah, balance. No, well, fair, no, fair is the right word. It should be that every weapon should have like a, a counter weapon or a reaction or some means of evasion. But it shouldn't be broken to the point where you can evade everything. Just it should become very skilled to do it. So again, you can see the, the statues have changed formation. I'm going in for the gap. I'm going to try for that monkey ball jump again. So I'm going to down the left hand side. I could have gone the right hand side either. See those coins I'm picking up? We're actually charging all star move. Look at the monkeys. Then. Right, I landed in the middle, right this time, so you see there's a super pickup. Unfortunately, I didn't collect it because I ran out of weapon. Ah! But I shot those snowballs off and I got it. But that actually gives you like three of whatever we consider the best weapon for this track. Sometimes it gives you free boost, sometimes it gives you free homing missiles. Uh, but it's a very skill-based move. 
And it's important to know that even first player can get that. So uh, it's going to be a tricky thing to balance. Well, you see, I've got one of the monkey balls splash there. Chuck me in there. I've actually gone the slow way this time, which is silly of me. I've done a fight against the floor, but I'll try and get round. I'll have to use a bit of drift here. I should point out at this point that the camera's probably not doing this game justice. Anyone who's played the original title will see there's a massive jump in graphical quality. Yeah, it's really kind of vibrant. We've done a lot of stuff. I mean, in some cases, it looks like renders, I think. And first again, congratulations. Talking and gaming is possible, as proved by Entire Steve Lysett, so executive producer, <laughs> Sumo Digital. No worries. So that was uh, Sonic and All Stars Racing Chance 1. Uh, hopefully out by Christmas, and I hope everyone plays it and enjoys it. Thank you very much for your time, Steve. No problem.